guys, this is Miss Carmella. I'm gonna read to you one of my very favorite books. Um, and it might seem like a Halloween book, but it's really good for all year round. And I know you guys will love it. Here's a really old copy of it. Um, and it's called The Witch Next Door. And it's by Norman Bridwell. And some of you may remember that Norman Bridwell, he's the one who wrote this story. He also, um, writes uh, Clifford, Clifford the Big Red Dog. Um, and so this one is in black and white. So I thought I'd bring one, that, another copy that I have at home. And this one is in color. The Witch Next Door by Norman Bridwell. The Witch Next Door. There's a witch living on our street. Do you know how I can tell? It's nothing you would notice the first time you saw her. It isn't the way she says hello. Maybe it's the way she does her shopping. You might know then. I thought she was a witch the very day she moved in. You can see she's making things move by themselves. And I was sure of it when she painted her house. Black isn't my favorite color, but after all, it's her house. You might notice her washing on Monday mornings. Or you might be surprised when she takes her pets for a walk. She's a good neighbor. She keeps her house very neat. If someone is sick, she sends them cookies and hot soup. When you have a kite up in the tree, she's always ready to lend a hand. And if you don't have a kite, she takes care of that too. She's a wonderful neighbor. Oh, she does cast a few spells now and then, but they don't hurt anybody. And she's very quiet. She goes to sleep at eight o'clock every night. Except once in a while when her friends come to a cookout. She's very good to us. She showed us the bat bath in her yard. We had so much fun with our witch. And then one day we were at her house having tea and cookies and there was a knock at the door. It was the people next door. They didn't look very happy. You can see what kind of faces do they have. You'd better move, they said. We don't want witches in our neighborhood. What kind of face does the witch have? Well, our witch got angry. I'd never seen her like that before. And we were angry too. And remember, it's okay to feel angry, guys. It's, we have all kinds of emotions. So our witch cast a spell on them. It was terrible. I couldn't look. She changed them into a handsome young prince and princess. Of course they forgot about asking our witch to leave. I asked the witch to change us into a beautiful prince and princess, but she said no. She said good boys and girls are more beautiful than princes and princesses. I don't know if you guys know what could be in here. Maybe you could take a guess. Maybe your grandma or your mom or your dad or your auntie or somebody has a bag like this at home, but this is my bag from home. And what's inside here is pinto beans. Um, so we're gonna do a few different things uh, that we had done in the fall. Um, and uh, we'll do some new things too. So we're gonna start with a story. And this story is called, and I'll read it in English, uh, Bean Soup. But in Spanish, it's Sopa de Frijoles. Sopa de Frijoles, or Bean Soup. For a yummy bean soup, all you need are two cups of beans, white, red, or black, as night, a big head of garlic with fragrant cloves, white as midday, a huge onion, red, white, or yellow as the dawn, and a pot round as the moon and as deep as a little lake. 
You need six cups of natural water, not with bubbles, or taste just plain pure water, pure water and nothing else, and a little salt volcano nestled in the bowl of soup. First spread the beans out on the sky of the table. The beans are stars, so you can, you can pretend that your beans are stars while you're cleaning them, you're sorting them. You throw away any little pebbles. When the beans touch, they clink like a little song. You can sing too. So this is something you can help your mom or grandma do or your dad. Oh, what a yummy soupy soup, soup, beanie soup. It'll be eaten by my brothers, my sister, my mom, and my dad, and me. So delicious. Pour water into the pot. Watery water, lovely granny who caresses, gives us life. And now the beans, clean beans. Throw them into the pot's lake for a swim. Carry them to the stove. Smile to yourself as the little flames give the pot a hug. So you can ask your mom if you can help her to cook the beans. There you'll leave them. Don't cover them. For an hour or more, the beans will foam a foam like a cloud. Skim it off with a big spoon. The fire will dance while the beans slowly get soft. The water boils and sings. The beans dance together. The water has turned brown like the color of Mother Earth. Your house smells wonderful like the earth after the first winter rains. Yeah, and you can see, look how you can see. He's smelling the delicious smell of the beans. Now it is time to cut the onion. First, you have to remove the onion's coat, its soft, delicate skin. Before you cut it in four, you need to say, thank you for your lovely taste, little onion, as you slowly start to chop. Try not to cry because tears can make food taste sour. So if you cut an onion, sometimes the smell of it is strong and makes your eyes water. Garlic also comes dressed, each clove in a little white dress. One by one, you peel them saying, thank you for being so tasty. Some you chop up, some you leave whole. Then it's time to add them with the onions to the brown soup lake. You add the salt, sprinkling it through your fingers as though it rain blossoming from your hand. Stir the soup with your big spoon. Draw circles as though you are Mother Earth turning around the sun. While the soup is cooking, pick up the pebbles from the beans, the onion peel, and the garlic skins. Take them all to a tree or to your garden and bury them there so Mother Earth keeps on growing flavors. So it's good to, that's called um, composting. <laughs> I forgot the word. Now at last, everything is ready. Heat the tortillas, take out the deep bowls and the spoons. Decorate the table with flowers and smiles. Call your mom and your dad, your brothers and your sister, and eat up the loving, lovely, bean soup. Wow, look at those tortillas. Look like they're delicious too. And there you can see him with his mom and dad and his sister and his brothers. And they're all gonna eat this delicious bean soup or sopa de frijoles. Hey guys, so we're talking about beans. We're doing a little lesson on beans. Um, and some of the other things you can do, but as well as helping your parents make beans, is you can take some beans out and you can, and in the story you heard that they clink. You can hear that they make a clinking noise. You can ca count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. And then if you want, you can keep trying to go after 10 to 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And some of you might wanna go even higher. What comes after 15? 16, 
17, 18, 19, 20. And then after that, if you want, you can practice to write um, your numbers. And this is how we're gonna write our numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and if you want to keep going, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and I'll have to put twenty right here. And once you're done with that, if you want, let's see if it went through, no it didn't. You can flip your paper over and you can try to write your name, your mom and dad can help you, and you could put glue on it if you want and you can stick, um, you can trace your name with the beans. So Miss Carmel is a really long name, so I'm gonna have my helper here, uh, we're gonna use her name, Miss Haley. So we'll write her name. H A I L E Y and then you can get your beans and you can either with glue or even if you just want to practice putting the beans to make each letter and it might help you remember I kind of wrote her name small but it might kind of remember, help you remember um, the way your letters and your name are, are spelled. And you could do this with other letters too. You could do it if you wanted to write. I know some of you, when you left class, were writing mom, and you were writing dad. So those are some other names that you can, or you could ask other, if you want to try to write your pet's name or, but it would be good for you to start with your first name um, and practice that. All right, guys.